So we're here in the big shop today and we've got a fun experiment on the go. We're going to try welding up a hybrid loaf pan slash Dutch oven out of this quarter inch plate steel. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but I've always wanted to try. If our loaf rises up like that, we've still got enough distance here that we can put a lid on without the, the bread hitting the lid. So I'm starting to get the hang of this plasma cutter thing. First couple cuts, I think I was going too fast and they end up blowing out at an angle. This one here is nice and straight and true. So I gotta clean that slag off. So I cleaned these edges all with the grinder ready to tack them together, but it hit me that I almost forgot to uh, sand the mill slag off this side or grind it off. So I'm going to do that next before I tack it together. Now the next step is I'm going to put it over on the welding table and go to town with the welder, get it all welded up. So that's going to take a while. I'll probably just switch the time lapse mode for that and because I'm going to turn the big exhaust fan on. It's getting smoky in here already. Just got one of these rotary files in the die grinder. I'm going to clean up the inside welds with it. I've never actually used one of these before. I just touched it on there a second ago. It looks like it makes a lot of metal filings. So I might be blind by the time I'm done this, but I'm going to forge on. Two long pieces are tacked from underneath, but these are just sitting there yet. I just cut them on the plasma cutter, they're still hot. So the next step is take it over to the welding table and I'm going to weld all the way around here and then on the underside as well so there's no gaps for water to get in and rust. So now I'm going to go back with the grinder and kind of chamfer these down, to make it an angled cut all the way around or a chamfered cut. This project's about 98% grinding. So I'm going to chamfer this top edge, probably about an eighth of an inch, just to soften it up a little bit. And I guess these edges as well, just to ease them over a little bit. 
polish it all up and weld it on. So I've got the box all cleaned up with the uh, flap disc on the grinder. Now the next step is to lay out for the handle. I've got the handle all polished up, ready to weld on. Once it's laid out, I'm going to cover the lid with uh, canola oil again to stop the welding spider from sticking onto it. And then weld the handle on the top. I have a pattern in my mind, but I don't know how to get it onto the steel. And then I don't know how to cut it. And then I don't know how to make a second one identical to the first one. So a new plan, you bend the mat, hole saws in the drill press, make sure a perfect radius right there, maybe the smaller one here, maybe not, might be the same one, and then again, I think that's going to work. Now I just got to find the mandrel for one of these, which is lord knows where. So we'll set it off that every time. Check these out. They're so cool. Gonna clean them up, weld them on. Start mixing the flour. So that concludes the manufacturing process of this. Everything's welded, polished up, handles are on. Loving the look of it, the, the overall shape, just something about it that's easy on the eyes. So now the next step is we're going to uh, take it back home and oil it up and season it. And we'll probably do that three or four times so it gets a nice dark patina on it. And then that should make it non-stick and non-rusting. Then we'll make some bread. Okay, so we're back in the kitchen. I'm all cleaned up, it's a new day. So this has all been sanded down now with uh, 220 grit in the plumb sander and I've done all the little edges, just kind of softened all the edges up a little bit, cleaned up anything that was kind of sharp or abrasive on the hands. So now the next step is I gotta get it in the kitchen sink and give it a good thorough scrubbing with dish soap and water. So I'm gonna give it a good scrub with this scrub brush. So I've taken the top rack out of the barbecue, so this will fit in. So 
So I'm not sure, but I'm guessing it's probably going to be about 15, 20 minutes before that solidifies on there. You know, for the second uh, coat, that's still fiery hot. You can actually see it's still already turning colors just by wiping it on, it's so hot. So it's been seasoned three times right now, and I think that's enough. It's hard to tell on the camera. It, on the camera, it looks a lot brighter, but in real life, it's almost pure black. So we're going to pull it now and let it cool down. When, actually, while it's cooling down, I'm going to start mixing up some dough and put this thing straight to work. So the dough is in the pan. Every dish we own is dirty from making the bread dough. Looks like this was a success. The bread's looking good. Dutch oven's looking good. So let's get the bread out and have a look at it up close. So I'm gonna drop that on the floor. Now, I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, but as little as I know about welding, I know even less about bread making. Come on, slice. That is hot. Looks good. Okay, let's give this a uh, taste test. A little butter up a piece here. good stuff right there. So this has been a real fun project welding this up and designing it on the fly and learn a little more about baking bread. I think it should last for many years. So take care. Thanks for watching. They led on a horizon back at me makes me think of my baby. Said flowing, flowing. She's still there. I can't see where she's going, but I hope it's near. Life ain't what it seems. There's still a part of me that's trapped.